All right, in this video, we're going to go over major muscle groups. So, major muscle groups and the exercises that work those out. I'm going to be going fast in this video because I've got a lot to explain and very short time to do it. So, let's go up here. Um, before you really look at these muscle groups, you need to understand concentric contraction and eccentric contractions. So here's the best explanation I can give you of concentric and eccentric contractions using the same muscle group. So here's the biceps. So when we do our lift here, when we bring the weight towards us, we do a pulling motion, we're concentrically contracting the bicep. When we lower that weight, so we let gravity kind of pull it down, we slowly lower the weight, that's an eccentric contraction, that's a negative um, phase and the bicep is elongating. So think concentrically or concentric contraction and think eccentric elongating and that'll help you remember that. And so it's important to understand concentric because it lets us know which muscle groups are being worked when we're doing a lift because most of the exercises that you see or most of the machines that you see when they list particular muscle groups they're talking about the concentric contraction of certain muscle groups in order to lift that weight so let's start here with the lower body first so we're going to talk about quadriceps let's move over here let's talk about gluteus maximus and hamstrings and gastrocinemus which is also called the calves or calf muscle so let's talk about exercises that work these out so lunges squats leg extensions anytime you do a pushing activity with the legs you're going to be hitting the quadriceps which are like four muscle groups in one so you also need to understand the difference between pushing and pulling activities because anytime I do a pushing activity the quadricep is concentrically contracting to do that lift so lunges squats leg extensions anytime I extend that leg out the quadriceps is doing is concentrically contracting. Let's talk about gluteus maximus. So we have the gluteus maximus here. So again, squats, lunges, and what that should tell you, again, this is a pushing muscle. So trying to push weight away from me. So lunges, squats, or lift my own weight away from the floor. Gluteus maximus. So here's a pulling muscle in the lower body, which are leg curls to work out the hamstrings. So any type of leg curl or deadlift would work out the hamstring which is a pulling muscle. So you're pulling the limb or pulling the weight towards you. And then you have gastrocinemus which would be like calf raises would be a good activity to work out the gastrocinemus. So let me draw out the gastrocinemus there and any type of dorsiflexion where you are I'm sorry plantar flexion is going to cause you to either lift your weight up off the floor and cause the gastrocinemus to concentrically contract so calf raises would be a good example for um, the gastrocinemus or calf muscle let's move up here to the upper body real quick I'm gonna change colors let's talk about the deltoid so I have the deltoid here and the deltoid is a tricky muscle. So this is anterior. Anterior deltoid, so the person's facing towards us. So that's gonna be a pushing pushing activity. So push-ups or bench press. Shoulder press. would all utilize the anterior, the front part of the deltoid to concentrically contract. Let's talk about the biceps here. So 
biceps and it is a pulling muscle so arm curl would work out the biceps arm curl or even a not a pull up but a chin up would have the arm in the appropriate position chin up chin up is where your palms will be facing towards you when you actually do the um, chin up so let's talk about pectoralis major pectoralis major and here again it's a pushing muscle so bench press or chest press if you were using a machine bench press or push up I'll try to give you a body weight alternative push up would work out the pectoralis major rectus abdominis now I have a question for you um, the people that are watching this video if anybody knows the difference between the I spelling and the US spelling of rectus abdominis, I've seen it spelled both ways. It seems that the rectus abdominis with the I spelling is more common than the US. And I don't know if somebody has just made a mistake along the way and um, there are certain textbooks that have US spelling and I've also found it on, on the web as well. So I don't know if this is a plural form or if it's a singular form or, or what's going on but if anybody knows the difference between the different types of spelling of rectus abdominis I'd like to know so you can just make comments on this video to let me know so this is going to be sit-ups and crunches would also work out the rectus abdominis to cause it to concentrically contract so it's more of a pulling muscle Now let's talk about the trapezius, which kind of makes a diamond shape here on your back. Trapezius is a tricky muscle in that it has a lot of different actions. So most commonly, if you do rows, you're going to work the trapezius when you're kind of pinching the shoulder blades in. You're going to cause the trapezius to contract. But if you look on some shoulder press machines, you're going to see that it says the trapezius are also worked. Well, what happens is as you fully extend the arms up to finish out the shoulder press, normally your, sh your shoulders will shrug up, and when they shrug, you're hitting the trapezius. So that's a pushing. So it can be a pushing or a pulling, depending on the type of activity you're doing. If you're doing a row, it's pulling. If you're doing a shoulder press or a shrug, it's pushing. So let me write in shrugs. Shrugs are always used a lot to, to work out the trapezius. Now let's talk about, let me change colors so that we can see the difference between these different muscles. Let's talk about the latissimus dorsi. So we have a latissimus dorsi. It's a pulling muscle. Latissimus dorsi. And it's a pulling muscle so it does a lot of pulling so pull-ups of course pull-ups are different than chin-ups and that your palms are facing away so you have pull-ups and then you have you also have rows here for the latissimus dorsi and remember when we talked about the deltoid or well, here's a posterior deltoid and it does pulling activities so it's the posterior so it's the back part of the deltoid the deltoid has three parts so we had anterior doing pushing and we had posterior doing um, pulling and then you have the middle part that does abduction of the arm and we'll talk about that in just a little bit so the next muscle I want to talk about is the erector spinaeus so it kind of travels up this outside portion of the spine here and it allows you to do let me spell it out real quick for you erector it's an O spinea or spinaeus yeah that would be good for back extensions back 
extensions or deadlifts. So back extensions or deadlifts with the erector spinaeus. So it's the antagonist muscle group to the erector uh, to the rectus abdominis. So the rectus abdominis here does a curling action, and the erector spinaeus allows you to extend the body back out. So here you're curling the body up with the rectus abdominis, and the erector spinaeus allows you to stretch the body back out doing some sort of back extension or deadlift. So if you're doing 100 sit-ups over here, you need to do about 60 sit-ups so that you don't create some sort of weakness. You want to train those antagonist muscle groups. Same thing for the quadriceps. When you're training the quadriceps, let's say I'm doing 100 pounds here, I need to do about 60 pounds of the same amount of repetitions for the hamstring so I don't create some sort of weakness. So I don't go out and do some sprints and, and pull a muscle. So that kind of explains antagonist muscle groups and how you should train those as well. So the next thing I want to talk about real quick before I run out of time is abduction adduction. So if I take this arm and I bring it away from the body, so there's a center line cutting me in half, and I take the arm away from the body, that is abduction. Let me write it up here. Abduction. So if I take that same limb and bring it back to the body, so I'm bringing, I'm lowering it back to the body, that is ad, adduction. So abduction, you're taking the limb away from the body. So abduction, I'm taking away, going away from the body. And adduction, I'm adding it back to the body. So I'm bringing it back to the body. So that's a good way to think of abduction, adduction. And that's how you're going to work the middle portion of the deltoid is doing abduction, taking the arm away. Abduction, like you get abducted. The last thing I want to talk about is working out compound lifts, doing compound movements. It's going to work out multiple muscle groups. So bench press or push-ups. Bench press, squats or leg press rows and some sort of leg curl. If you do those four activities there, that's going to train almost every major muscle group in your body. That's going to improve your metabolism because the more lean muscle mass you have, the more calories you're going to burn at rest and the more calories you're going to burn when you're active. So that's the reason compound movements are best. So if you don't have a lot of time in your weight training program, make sure you hit these four and maybe if you did three sets of each, that would be sufficient enough to help build more lean muscle mass. Doing things like arm curls and and leg extensions just by themselves, that's great, but these work out multiple muscle groups. Like bench press, you're working out pectoralis major, triceps, deltoid. With squats, you're working out gluteus maximus, gastrocnemius, you're working quadriceps. With rows, you're hitting almost every major muscle group in the back, and with the leg curls, you're working out the hamstrings. So there you've created some sort of balance and, and you've hit almost every major muscle group. Even with rows, you're still hitting biceps because it's a pulling motion. So I hope this explained um, all the major muscle groups and the exercises that go along with those muscle groups. And I hope you understand the importance of doing compound lifts and the difference between concentric and eccentric contractions and how they're used to understand which muscle groups you're working out. So I will see you in the next video.